All right, we know what we're doing now. We just gotta dig, dig, dig. Milky ribbon worm? Yep. Milky ribbon worm. Really bad news worms for these clams. There we go, I finally got my first good one. I didn't smash it, didn't break it. That's gonna be a good eater. These are alewives. Uh, they're, flowing, they're swimming up the river this year uh, to spawn. And we've tried to blend them. Uh, we made fish head soup. Um, so today I'm gonna try something different. Today we're kind of behind the eight ball, so I wanna get on top of my calories really quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna harvest all the sperm and egg from these fish, and I'll be able to combine it with a dry uh, uh, fish leather fruit. <laughs> fruit leather, fish leather I made yesterday, and that'll be my breakfast. All right, there we go. That's not too bad of a haul. I'd say you get that, probably two fish, uh, three fish maybe, will equal one large chicken egg, and I've got a whole bowl full. That's a lot of calories right there. And no bones, that's the best part. We're gonna keep using this for bait, for our lobster traps so this is not going to go to waste and we can still eat these too i'm going to be able to cook this on a stove and later today we have plans to go out to zach's shelter and continue the rest of the challenge so it'll be more in line with what you guys feel as a survival challenge would should look like all that matters to me is that i'm eating food in case the modern food chain system crashes i want to be ready and I'm probably gonna have a little bit of gasoline in my car. I'm gonna have guns, ammo. I'm gonna have fishing rods. I'm gonna have traps. I'm gonna have the ability to survive. The question is, will you? Are you ready? Are you working on your skills? We got our fish head soup from yesterday. And we're gonna pour off the broth and use that for the uh, use that for the to put the uh, eggs and stuff in so we can cook it off and then have clean just boiled boiled eggs in the broth just eggs just well okay in the milk <laughs> fish not, sperm not sperm fish sperm we're gonna go with eggs and sperm Egg, for breakfast eggs and fish sperm for breakfast yummy still fish dumplings in there look at that and heads so on top of that, we're gonna add this. We're gonna wait till it heats up first, Zach. Or are you gonna throw it in there now? You don't uh, want. I know we should wait till it warms up. Okay, and then we'll dump that in. That'll be for breakfast. How's that look, guys? Would you eat that? Would you survive or die? All right, guys. We got those fish all cleaned up. We have a guest here today, who's going to be around for a couple days. His name's Malcolm, the Hidden Woodsman. You probably heard of him. He makes all sorts of bags. Um, what else do you make? Bags? Uh, any type of camping gear, bags, camping gear, uh, yeah. haversacks, all type of things. Little pouches. Right on. Anything to help yourself go camping. So anyway, we're going to jump inside. We're going to have some fish breakfast, yeah? yeah? yeah I'm looking forward to it. Alright, come on in. There you go. Moment of truth. Try that out. You know what it reminds me of? The patty you used to get at school. The little, the little uh, mystery patty. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> totally. It does look like a really overly cooked gray burger that comes from like McDonald's or Burger King like in those. Oh yeah. So, yeah. so what do you think it tastes like it, from modern comparison? It doesn't go bad. It stays stable. No, 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 no. It'll, it'll need refrigeration. It's too, it's too moist. Like there's too much moisture in there still. I mean, we could just bake this mat out of it. Yeah, it'll be dry, uh, like like. Leather. But it's portable. I mean, like you don't have to cook it. Can eat it cold. That's more what I'm talking about. It's good. As, it's not bad, right? Yeah, I actually like it. So that it has a fish flavor, but it has like a meat texture almost. Yeah. So that's whole. That's a whole fish. Camera. We put it in the blender. I feel like I need some mayonnaise <laughs> some and lettuce, some tomato, lettuce, tomato, <laughs> and mayonnaise. a couple pieces of bread, and you're good. Yeah. I wasn't just saying that because I was on camera. I would eat that stuff. It's very good. Very good. All right. So we got a deal, Malcolm. That we're feeding you now, but you have to get your own food from now on, so that you're not dead weight on the adventure. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. No pressure. No pressure. You can <laughs> eat, you can eat modern foods all you want, but you can't help us gather any food. That would be I, I don't want you technically eat. cheating. Sounds right. Good. But you owe us a meal. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because we gave you one meal, so you owe us one meal. Um, dig in, have a taste. I will. Uh, Zach, have a taste. I will oblige. With yeah. just a touch of fresh wadobo. Yeah, the wadobo helps 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I because I didn't taste it. 
naked. Yeah, it was something I kind of thought about this morning when I was sleeping. I'm like, you know what? Those fish are no good, but the eggs, I can go get those real quickly. There's not going to be any bones in there, and it's going to be, you know, easy to cook and eat. It just kind of slides down your throat. All right, this is going to be bowl number two. I stood around for an hour, and now I'm hungry, so we're still getting ready to go. I think it's the kind of soup that grows on you. Kind of good from your beard too. It's a little bitter. The flowers are already out. The flowers are out. I've got my rations for the day. That's probably. I'd say conservatively about a pound, nah, it's gotta be less than a pound, half a pound of food. This is the fruit leather, so it's portable, it's ready to go. We are down to just our bait again. We do have it with us, so we're probably gonna smoke it. We can get more if we need to uh, bait our lobster traps again, which is probably going to happen. Uh, lobster traps, we can't, we're not going to check until tomorrow. We have something else uh, on the docket for today, but first we're gonna go over and get off grid Which I know you guys appreciate a lot more just the logistics of this and getting everything done has prevented us from getting out there in the woods but We're going out to uh, Zach's got a off-grid shelter. Uh, what do you call it? It's a it's, it's my reed hut a reed hut. Yeah Couldn't think of the name. I was gonna call it a yurt, but it's not quite it's like, like a yurt style But it's made out of uh, natural like natural grasses and materials. So I think Zach's gonna sleep in his in his uh, reed hut. I have a tent, obviously. All right, from here on out, we are going to be off-gridding it. Kind of not, not really what I would expect to see, spending quite a bit of time in the city, but get off-grid now. The woods looks an awful lot like home. It's got deciduous mix, uh, coniferous. It's got that mix, same mix as home. Really, it's got the same kind of climate too, I feel. Um, even being 12 hours away from where I live, it's, uh, it feels an awful lot like home. It's got a lot of the same kind of feel, uh, although it's rainier. <laughs> it's definitely a lot rainier here. And the mosquitoes are just starting to come out too, so those are going to be... They're not too, too bad. It's still on the cool side, but I think the sun comes out, we'll be all right. Just right now, it's those, uh, that perfect weather where those mosquitoes are just having their heyday. All right, done. So that'll be home for the next few days. Man, there's a ton of mosquitoes. And there's ticks, something that I'm completely not used to. So I've got my pants tucked into my socks. And I guess I'm gonna be doing a tick search at the end of this. So he's got a little door here. And then you can crawl in and he's got a tarp set up for his roof. I'm pretty sure he designed this as part of his trip back from the alone show trying to experiment with different shelters he did there so i've just got a pointed roof so that's all fastened he's got the reeds uh on the outside and on the inside he's lined it with it looks like uh saplings live saplings still got the bark on it. he hasn't removed any of that he's got a uh, thatched reed bed and then he's got a fire pit in the middle lined with rocks here for ventilation up top here that's where it'll vent out so this is kind of in the style of lots of different types of primitive shelters all around the world native americans would do this with a longhouse you could do this um as a clay-based shelter same kind of concept the tricky part is getting your dry roofing materials so obviously this is a man-made product the plastic and i tell you what this stuff is hard to eat in abundance but i'm here for you guys i'm doing the best that i can i think i'm going to employ zach's apprentice chris to take me on a tour to see if we can't bump into some turkeys So 
Well, that's my allotment of flour. As my cheat for this year, I've added massa corn flour, one cup a day, 440 calories. I don't know if I even mentioned this in this video, but the goal of the Wilderness Living Challenge is to gain or maintain our body weight. So we weighed ourselves at the start, and at the end we're gonna weigh ourselves again. If we lose any weight, we lose the challenge. So I'm happy to get rid of this old bag where everything kind of falls out of it. Um, it's a fanny pack I normally use for hunting, but as you can see, it's poorly built. I'm gonna show you why it's poorly built, and maybe you can make me a fanny pack this style for fishing. But the problem is it kind of all collapses yeah, when it's around no, your weight. There's no back support. There's no back Look support. It. I can see it. And there's nothing to keep the front. So everything like wants to spill out. As soon as you open it, it wants to, it wants to fall down yeah. like that and True. fall out. Yeah. All right, I got all my turkey stuff in there. So Malcolm, why don't you show me what the pack you're going to upgrade this hunting vest to? So I gift this to you for your adventures. Awesome. So why don't you tell me about it? Uh, Quick. This is a, a day rock that I, that I created. This is a pack after a European, uh, a vintage style European pack. I took it after the uh, the Swedish packs, but it's it's all American made. I, I I help make these myself. All inside is all orange, so you can see if you're looking at night for all your different items in here. Uh, this is the, the U.S. Woodland Camo. They're, they're made to last. You'll have you'll probably pass it on to your kid when he's older. No, it's perfect. You got the yeah. big beefy straps on there. I said if you're gonna make one. I 100% have to have beefy strap, and I gotta yeah. have a chest, a chest. Uh, I don't know what you call it. A sternum strap. A sternum strap. There you go. Yeah. I do appreciate this. Yeah, you're I, I will 100% yeah. use it, so thanks. I am very glad to be here and <laughs> hanging out with you guys. Yeah, so Malcolm's going to be hanging out with us for a little bit and we'll see if we can put a turkey on the spit uh, using his gear. So as a gift, I'm going to send you a Work Sharp Sharpener. That's uh, one of my sponsors. This will sharpen any knife. It's nice and portable. Yeah, you sharpen my axe, my hatchet, and my knife with this. Yeah, absolutely. It Thank sharpens you. everything. So Thank you. yeah, enjoy that. So we tried to convince Malcolm to come with us, but he's uh, he's out. He wants to stay in the woods. I think he wants his dirt time, to be honest. So we're gonna head out and get some clams. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, because if it does, then we won't get our turkey hunt in. And if it's unsuccessful, it means we're, we have nothing to eat except for fish again. So I am going to bring it fish with me. I'll bring my water bottle with me, and hopefully this all works out. This is not looking much like a wilderness living challenge. Look, much more like season one of the Wilderness Living Challenge. If you guys remember, we only ate fish that season. When it was rough. Well, I'm hungry. I'm getting kind of lightheaded too. But I'm eating, still eating the fish. To keep snacking on it, keep pounding it back. It's really too bad that we're not in the fall here because there's actually lots of acorns on the ground here scattered which make an excellent resource but wrong season so no luck on that filler full of clams hopefully that's the plan all right guys we are uh, set to go you guys eat clam anybody out there we've eaten beaver before i'm wondering you guys eat clam let me know leave a comment below so we're on low tide right now just like it sounds, the water is out. Expose all the flats. So there's certain areas where you can harvest from according to a map. I paid 15 bucks to come and do this. We can take a peck, which is a unit of measure that I don't know anything about. Two inches is the minimum size. I guess we just jump out there and get her done. I don't know. I have to learn this as I go. The lady at the office that sold the license said, good luck. And I said, do I need it? And she said, yeah, and a strong back. So there you go. This is not guaranteed, apparently. Dig only in the open areas. You may harvest one peck, which we'll have to Google what a peck is. I think it's like a half a bucket. If you find milky ribbon worms, remove them from the flats. I have no idea what those are. I'll have to Google that too. Might be kind of obvious, milky ribbon worms. Uh, watch out for glass and no commercial digging. Everybody got it? Ready? Go Team on. break. I'm gonna collect as many as I am hungry and I'll pay the fine. 500 bucks is probably worth it at this point. 500 per, like per clam. clam. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid laws getting in the way of my wilderness living. Everything's got a skill that you gotta learn to be successful. I'm a little bit out of my element at the moment, but I will pick up quickly as soon as I know what to do. So we're looking for a hole in a bubble something exactly. <laughs> it all looks the same to me so far I asked Chris what these were Zach's apprentice he said they're actually mussels 
but he, I said, I, you can, can you eat a mussel? He said, yeah, but they're chewy. So it's probably as chewy as like clams we get back home. So maybe grab a couple and see how they go. Not what we're looking for though. So keep the search on, see what we can track down. Take myself a break. Have you ever had seaweed soup? Seaweed soup. Yeah. I might be good. Yeah, right? This is Zach's way up the river there. The river, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm so hungry. Up the coast? Is that what you say? Up the beach. Up the beach. And there's no clams in sight at all anywhere. Zach's about a kilometer up. And we kind of looked, putted around here, not finding anything. Oh, my stomach's growling. It's like constant just emptiness. This feels nice, actually. Ah, nice break. Ooh, uh. All right, so we ran into Jay. Jay, what's your what, what's your title? I'm on, I'm on the shellfish committee. We monitor the flats, make sure people know what they're doing, and uh, have licenses. Right, stay legal first stay off. Legal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're all legal, so we got checked out. We're all good, and he, he actually took the time to show us exactly what we're looking for, which is a huge help. So now we're on to them. So we've got they're just little tiny holes where we were kind of not paying attention to them, I guess. Right. And then you kind of have to dig what you say, like around 10 inches around each. Little well, do you want to go down 10 down, inches? Down, down 10 inches, you, but in the round. You want, to, you want to start like two or three inches, four inches in front of the hole because you don't want to hit the clam. Right. And as you go down, you'll see the uh, clam squirt. Yes. And that will sort of give you a sense <laughs> of where they are. Right. And then you just keep going at it and try to come in at it off the side. Is so this squirting like a defense mechanism or it's just like... It's, I, it's responding to... It's just responding to the pressure and... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, it shoots a squirt of water out. But yeah, we, we messed up our first two, which is, I mean, natural, I guess. But we'll still eat oh, them. Yeah. <laughs> we'll still eat them. <laughs> I'm sure that's happened before. But I uh, really appreciate your help. All right, very good. And your name is? Chris. Chris. All right, Chris. Yeah, check us out on YouTube. The, the Wooded Beardsman. And Zach goes under... Uh, uh, what is it? Fowler's oh, make Fowler's maker mischief. Do you I see the that. Do you see the vehicle the, there? Yeah, I saw the car. Yeah, yeah, so you'll see you'll see your, you'll see yourself in, the, in an episode. So. There you go. Okay, yeah, appreciate it. All right, Chris. Good Thank luck. you. Keep looking for. Yeah, there's lots of them. I see them now. Yeah. All right, we know what we're doing now. We just got to dig, dig, dig. He said. Uh, he said that it's a lot easier digging in sand or mud. So, but we're, we're dig with what we got. So let's dig up some more. See how many we can get. Yeah. So Chris found uh, one of the really bad news worms for these clams. So we're supposed to kill them on site or at least remove them on site. Milky ribbon worm? Milky ribbon worm. There we go. Looks just like it sounds. There. There we go. I finally got my first good one. I didn't smash it, didn't break it. That's going to be a good eater. All right. So we figured it out. We can take a pack each, which is about one half of a five gallon pail. So we can pick all together uh, one pail and a half, one five gallon pail and a half, which is quite a bit of material. So it's not quite a full bucket. There's a pail inside there. So it's probably, I don't know, three quarters. I, I'm curious to know what the nutritional value is in the clam, so you guys figure that out. It's probably fairly lean protein, so we may be back to where we started as far as, you know, kind of like an eating fish kind of deal. And there's a fair number of calories in there, it's just whether you can consume that many. But we'll we'll boil these up and we'll, we'll dobo them up. Yeah, that's about three quarters of a pill. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're halfway to... We're halfway to our limit. That's like, I think that's like one person, a little bit more over one person. Well, he said a half a pail is one. You think it's just a half? It's I mean, maybe. That's maybe. a typical five gallon, isn't it? It yeah. looks a little flared it's, off. It's a, it's a, it's a about. Bigger. Oh yeah, well, obviously regular. Yeah, that's a five. So that's about. Yeah. That's three quarters of a pail. It's like one person's fill, and then probably a quarter of somebody else's. Yeah. We could definitely still keep going. 
But the question yeah. is between yeah, we're four running. people. We can't, we how many can we eat? <laughs> how many can we eat before they go bad? I'm uh, digging with the Iono shovel. They sent me this uh, shovel to uh, test out and it's doing a really good job on these clams, keeping us alive. It's got a bunch of uh, survival type things inside. There's a, a fire steel. You can put whatever you want in here, throw some waterproof matches. There's also a knife. This thing comes apart, so it's all transportable. Good thing about it, it's got a nice sharp tip here. So you could use this. It's got a little bit of a saw here. Got a knife, uh, sharp knife edge on it as well. So if you wanna hack something up, you can do that too. But the best part about it, it's nice and light. It's got a nice grip on the handle. Uh, you got a glass breaker on the other side too if you wanna smash a window open or something like that. It's really heavy duty. The head will actually fold down. So all you do, grab it, turn the head, unscrew it. And then of course, watch the blade. You don't want to cut yourself. It can also be sharpened and resharpened. Fold that away, tighten it up. And as I mentioned before, you can reduce the size of it and pack it away. So you can store that in your car. So I'll put the information down below. If you guys want to look that up, it's called Ayuno. And it makes a good survival shovel. I've been beating the crap out of it today, digging up these clams, and it's doing an excellent job. So Iono makes a bigger shovel also. It's a fixed blade handle. It's a lot longer. It's got more leverage. If you want something more heavy duty, this is the one to go. I'll put both of them down in the description. You guys can decide which one you want. But you throw this in your truck and you do some roadside forging. I think Malcolm's been really busy. So we're gonna go check to see his handiwork. He's been cutting wood and doing all the camp chores, which is really great. And he said he smoked a couple fish. Um, so we're gonna have a look at what he's got done. He's like, he said he tried to eat one. He panashed it and um, <laughs> he said he tried to eat one and he's like, it's bony. I'm like, dude, I didn't lie to you. Of course it's bony. <laughs> I would, I can eat anything, but that's one of those things that you just can't eat. So when you guys are going, I picked up some, some uh, dandelion roots. So this is going to be just, this is just the greens. I cut all the roots out. Right now I have the roots are drying out. We can even make a coffee, like a drink for it in the morning. You're going to mash them up. But you can, you can eat the roots. They just, they are bitter. And like you said before, this is for long-term survival. You need greens like this. You can, you know, you don't have to eat this and when you're surviving or whatever. You're just eating meat, but if you're going to live a long time in the woods. Yeah. You need the nutrients, right? You need the... Uh... Yeah, the vitamins, vitamins, minerals, all that good stuff. Your body needs it, can't make itself. And this can't get from meat. This is literally just sitting there. I'm gonna boil. I was gonna wait for you to get here till I boil them. Cool, appreciate that. It's a little salad. Yeah. My wife always tells me to eat my greens. <laughs> I panassed one of them. Oh right, you panassed it. Yeah, I yeah, forgot. Yeah, and it got real crispy, and it had a lot of adobo on it. And I was, you know, I was pulling a little bit of meat off, but. Lots of bones, and if you don't grind, eat two of the bones really, really good, they, they tend to stick in your in your mouth. Again, if this was survival, this is good eating. So that's a pretty good testament to what we're able to do, um, especially with modern technology, just stick them in the blender and actually make something that's completely inedible to anybody else, edible. And, you know, the, those fish cakes are not too bad. I mean, compared to picking stuff out of your throat, that's a success to me. And that's really what this wilderness challenge is about, is like, what resources do we have? And how can we make use of them, even if it's like really questionable resources? And in the case of the whale wives, this is exactly it. They're just like really questionable. But it's all we got. It's all we got to work with. Got to work with it. So this year, I'm going to use a massa corn flour as part of my cheat. I already know that it's going to be difficult this year to balance my calories, inputs, outputs. And the reason for that is because I know that in this area, there's not going to be a lot of sugars and a lot of fats if you watch some of the other seasons you should really go back and watch the season that precedes this one because in that season we looked a lot into what would it take as a whole 100 percent natural wild diet and we went after fats aggressively that year i'll be surprised if this makes any difference in the outcome or any significant difference, it's gonna help a little bit. 
440 calories when we're probably burning upwards of 2,500 calories every day. I mean, you might you might consider this a cheat, but I consider it uh, <laughs> not much of help, <laughs> put it that way. So we're gonna add this to my meal. I'm gonna make little breads, put this on the, near the fire. I'm gonna add this to my clams. And I'm gonna eat as many clams as I can because I'm force feeding myself at this point. I'm eating that fish meal every chance I get and stuffing it in here because I wanna know if I can survive an SHTF, if our modern food systems completely fall apart. I wanna know if I can make it. Some olive oil. <laughs> you keep saying that. Some fat. That's all we need right now. It's too hot down there. Welcome, you made it. I'll give you the honors. I uh, harvested it. That's right. <laughs> you didn't make it at all, did you? Actually, you made the salad. I'll give you that. Our dandelion leaves rather are pretty bitter, but uh, Malcolm's going to show me a trick. He's going to boil it twice and then hopefully get rid of that sour taste. It was one rinse of water. And then he says it hopefully end up kind of like a spinach. So I'm hoping it ends up like some kind of spinach too. And we find some salad dressing off in the woods. That'll be really nice. Or some butter. So what do you got on there, Chris? Got a little deer meat from this fall. Yeah? Yep. Dough that I got. Did you get it from this property? I did. Probably oh. 300 yards right across the stream there. People picking at this fish and not, not liking it yet. It's a little high up, but you know. Try to burn those bones off maybe near the end and it'll be all right to eat. I actually had a taste, but I wasn't running the camera. The, it, the bitterness is still in my mouth. Um, Chris tried it. He said he didn't taste bitter. Malcolm tried it. It didn't taste bitter. The leaves are not bitter. If you if you eat the bottom closer to the root, I think it's a, that's where you get a lot of the bitterness. And that's maybe why, because I just grabbed a whole chunk. I'll, I'll try again and I'll try... Just eat the leaves. I'm going to try again. I'll just eat the leaves this time, because I grabbed the whole stem and I think yeah, it's still stuck at the bottom back of my palate. But everybody's palate's different. That's the thing. Sometimes people like broccoli and sometimes people don't like broccoli. You know, same thing with uh, acorns. A lot of people find acorns to be really... Yeah, they're, they're tough acorns. Yeah, I mean, I like acorns. I don't find I don't find them to be bitter uh, as long as they're prepared properly. But some other people are just like, no, I can't stand that. Yeah, actually the leaves is a lot better. So yeah, I think you ate uh, closer to the root. Yeah, I think I ate the whole root actually. So it really does look like like oh, a yeah. boiled spinach. Yeah. So there you go. It's the stem. All right. So and that's it's woody too. Really woody. Yeah. And so you know the, the the young the young leaves are, are a lot tastier. It's, if you get the older ones, like you were saying, that's already bloomed, those those become very woody. Yeah, these leaves are fine. We're in Zach's shelter, so I'm keeping dry in here. I'm going to hang out. We're gonna hang out for a couple more hours, probably. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe just till we eat and then go to bed. Because everybody's pretty tired. There you go, that's what it looks like. I've eaten freshwater clams before they're chewy as snot. Take the foreskin off. <laughs> We're calling it. Yeah, that's that's right. the technical term. Yeah. That's what it looks that's like fine. there, guys. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. Yeah, yeah that's, that's outstanding. Right? Yeah. That's like e epic for. That, that's really good. Look at that. Totally worth collecting. They don't run away from you. As long as you've got a shovel or a stick, I'm sure you can get some. So this part here is, is the neck. You can, you can pull it from the body. So if you go to the restaurant and you order just fried necks, you get that piece. And then here's the, the belly. Inside the belly, that's where a lot of the grit is. But you can, you can remove the grit. See it? That's the belly right there. Right. So a lot of uh, when he's going, when the clams, you know, sucking up the water and whatnot, 
Got all the grits in there. There's a lot of flavor in the belly though. Yeah, I ate the whole thing and I got a shot of flavor. I don't know what it was. It's the belly. The belly. It, it, a lot of it's grit though, but the belly has that, that unique flavor to it. I know my, my grandmother used to, um, what did she used to do? She used to sit, let them in cold water overnight inside the uh, inside the refrigerator, and they would they would spit out the dirt if they had if when they're still alive, and so inside the cold water they they'd spit the dirt out. Right. So like at the bottom of the pan, you see all the dirt that they've spit out over, overnight. Yeah, purge. Yeah. Call it whatever you want to call it, but yeah. I remember her doing that, and then next morning she she'd boil them. Yeah. Yeah, these are great. Yeah. There's no real comparison from these clams to the freshwater clams, or else I just cooked the cl the freshwater clams wrong. But I'll try again. I will try them again. <laughs> That's a dirty. You're a dirty clam. You're dirty. <laughs> you're high. You're dirty clam. You're high on hunger. <laughs> I'm, I'm high on eating food. Yeah, you're, no kidding. You're a dirty clam. The calories oh. coming back in your life. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're gonna dig in. I'm gonna eat max belly fill on this uh, in combination with my cornbread. See how I feel on that. I don't feel I don't feel bad right now. I know, but I'm knowing behind on my calories. I know I'm hungry. Uh, putting that that volume of of uh, clam in my stomach is obviously helping too. Tomorrow morning we're gonna wake up early, uh, Chris and I, uh, and we're gonna try for a turkey. And then after that we gotta check uh, lobster traps. So there's gonna be quite a bit of exciting, hopefully, things to come. Or we might end up with empty lobster traps and no turkey, which is a distinct possibility also. Hopefully not, because we need we need a couple more wins here to keep us going. We can always go back to the alewives, uh, but that's not tomorrow because it's close to 48 hours. Aside from that, I mean, we can go get more clams. We've got a three day license, that's it. And then we have to renew it. I mean, not a big deal if we need to. So you guys stick around. You guys watch the whole video, right full stop. Go check out, check out Malcolm, the Hidden Woodsman. I'll leave a link down below and click over. Check him out. Um, I'll leave your Instagram as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The big yeah, he's big Instagram guy. Not so big on YouTube, but I'll leave both anyway. You guys go find him, and it's gonna be early morning for me. So catch you guys later.